things which God um, one way or the other is, is elevating. There are things that God wants to disclose. There are things which God wants to unveil. Yeah. One man of God once says, whenever God permits perishing paradigms, uh, 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 he, 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 he permits them so that they can produce prophetic uh, perceptions. Hallelujah. He also says that whenever there is a shaking, uh, 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 God will overrule and override overwhelming odds so that he can orchestrate a new order. Hallelujah. So this is one thing that we understand in this season that we are in. That there is stuff which God is releasing. There is stuff which God is unleashing in our midst. Hallelujah. So I want to talk to us for a few minutes today on the subject, the King's Highway. As, as, as we are talking about testimonies today, and as we are saying, he lifted me up and he planted my feet on the King's Highway. I want us to talk about the King's Highway this morning, I mean this evening, for a few minutes. And uh, the subtitle will be Occupy the Highways. The King's Highway. And the subtitle is Occupy the Highways. Judges chapter 5, verse 6 to 7. The Bible says, verse 6, Judges chapter 5, verse 6 to 7. In the days of Shanda, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied. Somebody say the highways were unoccupied. The highways were unoccupied. The highways were unoccupied, and the travelers walked through the byways. Other versions say the travelers walked through the sideways. The inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose. That I arose a mother in Israel. Note that Deborah did not arise as a woman, but she arose as a mother. Now the Bible says the highways were unoccupied. People were now using the sideways until I arose a mother in Israel. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3 to 5. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3 to 5. We read only chapter, I mean, part A. The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make stretch in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it the valley shall be exalted the mountains shall be brought low the crooked places shall be made straight and all flesh shall see it then Numbers chapter 20 verse 14 to 21 Numbers chapter 20, verse 14 to 21. Let me just paraphrase this one because um, of our time. Numbers chapter 20, verse 14 to 21. Now, we meet Moses. Moses is leading the children of Israel. They have crossed the Red Sea. And, and, and here they are. They are faced with the, uh, the, 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 the Edomites. And Moses is now requesting them so that they can give them access just to go through the land. And then they proceed with their journey to Canaan. Hallelujah. So verse 17 says, Please let us pass through our pass through your country. We will not pass through fields or vineyards. No, we will we'll drink water from wells. We will go along the king's highway. Somebody say the king's highway. The king's highway. We will not turn aside to the right hand or to the left hand until we have passed through your territory. Now listen to the response of the king of, of, of I mean, listen to the response of Edom. He's saying, you shall not pass through my land lest I come out against you. So the children of Israel said to him, we will not, we will go by the king's highway. 
And if I or my livestock drink any of your water, then I will pay for it. Let me only pass through on foot, nothing more. Then Edom said, you shall not pass through. Moses was denied access together with the children of Israel. They were supposed to move and walk along the king's highway. But then the enemy denied them access. And the Bible says they turned aside. So in a way, they moved from the king's highway and then they used the sideway. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want us to understand, and I thank God, the man of God already began the sermon for us. Hallelujah. Ah, 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 ah. There is always a way of getting to your destination at, at, at any given time. There are two ways. There is the side way and there is the highway. Yeah. So now, the way that you use to get to your result or to get to your destination determines who takes the glory at the end of the day. But our generation, we are so much concerned and we just want results only. We don't care how we get to the end. We only want the product. And we don't care the process of getting the product. So now, if you use the side way, it's either you take the glory or the devil takes the glory. But when you stick to the highway, the glory only goes to God. But now, what I want us to understand is the king's highway is not easy to follow. The king's highway is not just uh, 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 like, like, like how you can walk using the sideway. I'm sure it was not so easy for him to wait for so many years to get the degree. Hallelujah. It was not so easy for him. He could have used other means to get to the destination. He could have used other ways. Probably he could have bribed himself through. Probably could have made him a cheated his way through. But then he chose that I will stick to the highway. And I will not turn aside to use the side way. So now Deborah says, in the days of Shanga, the highways were unoccupied. People stayed on the side way until I arose. Now let me define the side way for you. The side way is anything that is outside the divine order of God. The side way is anything that, 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 is, uh, that is done out of faith. The side way is anything that is done or even involving sin inside it. Hallelujah. Let me give you just three examples of sideways in the scripture. Now when you read the Bible, it talks about the system of Sodom, which is uh, so much relevant to us as an institution, or rather as a Christian organization in such a, an institution. Where we are seeing the system of, 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 of Sodom trying to prevail and trying to, to, to gain dominion even in the midst of believers. Hallelujah. Now what the system of Sodom does, the system of Sodom takes the seed and puts it in a place of defecation. So instead of ideas or seeds being incubated, instead they are aborted. So now what happens is, uh, what was happening in the days of Deborah, the seeds were being aborted. The seeds were not being incubated. Then Deborah said, the people stuck to the sideways until I arose as a mother. Now a mother is somebody who has a womb to incubate seeds and then they become fruits. So what is happening is whenever you see the system of Sodom trying to prevail, there are seeds which God is releasing, huh? but then the system of Sodom wants to receive them first and put them in the place of defecation so that the seeds can be aborted. Mm. Oh, but I believe God for a generation that will rise up as a mother and be the first hand receivers of ideas from God. And then we relay the ideas to the world as the church of God. The second example that I want to give you. If you read in Mark chapter 8 verse 15 to 16. Mark chapter 8 verse 15 to 16. The disciples are in the boat. They have forgotten to take bread. They have forgotten to take bread. 
and, and, and they were arguing amongst themselves. You know, Jesus saw them arguing. And then he said to them, Beware of the leaving of the Pharisees and the leaving of Herod. And then they thought like, oh, maybe he's saying this because we forgot to take bread. But Jesus saw that they were not understanding and he said to them, no, 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 I'm not talking about this bread. I am talking about the system of the Pharisees. I am talking about the leaving of Herod. This is the side way, the system of the world. Now, Jesus' way was saying, with five loaves, you can feed 5,000. And here are 12 men. They have one loaf and they are complaining. And Jesus says to them, beware of the living of the Pharisees. Hallelujah. Why? Because the living of the Pharisees would want you to calculate things. We are 12 here. Divide the one loaf by 12. We cannot be are fed enough. It's the system of the world. Hallelujah. But the king's highway does not operate in that way. So now the king's highway speaks of one's jurisdictional authority. It's a place where you can fully exercise your authority. Like for example, a signature can only uh, be of use in a particular uh, jurisdiction or domain. Like for example, our chairperson, if he wants to sign things, he can only sign them for SCF only. If he goes to Trees of Life or other societies, his signature is invalid. Why? Because he is outside his jurisdiction. So now, when we are talking about the spiritual jurisdiction, we are talking about the place where as Christians, we are able to, to, to exercise our authority. So now the Bible says we are seated together with Christ in the heavenly places. Implying that there is a jurisdiction where we operate from. Now there are so many types of jurisdiction. There is a word jurisdiction where Psalms 1 says, Blessed is a man who, uh, who, who meditates upon the word of God day and night, whatsoever he does shall prosper. It's a word jurisdiction. There is also a will jurisdiction where Romans says, Be ye transformed in your mind so that you can understand the, 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 the good, the permissive, and the perfect will of God. Implying that I can wrap myself around the will of God and then I am able to exercise my authority. And then there is also the gift jurisdiction or the office jurisdiction. Here now we are talking about spiritual gifts whereby when God has ordained you to be an apostle or a prophet or a pastor, the moment you exercise your gift, there is authority that you relay in your jurisdiction. Hallelujah. 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 So let me just give you three ways of how to activate your jurisdiction. Number one, understand that we control things in the realm of the spirit. For example, by prayer. Somebody say prayer. Prayer. And then, in this one, we have to understand that we exist in two realms at a particular time or a particular moment in time. There is the natural realm and then there is the spiritual realm. I just closed my notes because if I follow them, we won't finish. Hallelujah. There is the natural realm and there is the what? The spiritual realm. Moses was on the top of the mountain and Joshua was by the valley. When Moses was lifting his hands, they were prevailing. Those were two realms. There was the side way and there was the king's highway. There was the side way and there was the king's highway. Now the Bible says to be carnally minded is death. <laughs> Implying that as a believer you can choose to operate in the natural or you can operate in the spiritual. Now the Bible says uh, when the, the church Actually, when Peter was in prison, after Herod had killed James, they had been operating in the natural. But when they heard that Herod is about to kill 
Peter, they said, no, 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 no. Let's take things to our jurisdiction. And the Bible says they engaged in prayer. And they, 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 they just stepped into the dimension of the king's highway. And what happened is, their prayer changed things when Peter was in prison. Why? Because they were operating in their jurisdiction. Yeah. Number two way of integrating your jurisdiction uh, uh, is to stir up your kids. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 says, as we close, it says, uh, Timothy, I remember the faith that was in your grandmother, Lois, and that was in your mother, uh, Eunice. And I put you to remembrance for this reason. To stir up the gift that is in you. Okay. <laughs> Let me explain it. He says, I remember the faith that was in your grandmother, Lois. And that was in your mother, Eunice. And I am putting you to remembrance that you may activate and stir up this thing and flame it. Why? Because I can see that it is lying to me. Now what Paul says, he is saying, Timothy, when I look at your grandmother and I look at your mother, I, I, I have no doubt that the thing that was in them is in, in, is in you. But this is the thing. This thing is inside you, but it is sleeping. What you just need to do is to activate it. What you just need to do is to stand it up. Now church, I want to talk to you today. And realize uh, with me that there is a generational gift that is flowing in this family tree. It began from the grandmother to the mother. And Paul said, I have no doubt it is in you, O Timothy. But I want you to activate it. And as I Think about believers. As a believer, you belong to a family tree. The Bible says your family tree, your great grandfather is Abraham. Your, 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 your great grandfather is Abraham. So when I look at your family tree, that, that, that I have no doubt that this thing that was in Abraham is in you. I have no doubt that the thing that was in Jacob is in you. I have no doubt that the thing that was in Isaac that made him to sow in famine and live in hundred fold is in you. But what has happened with you? Our problem as a church is that it is sleeping. Though it is inside us, but it is sleeping. So instead of operating through the king's highway, we are operating using the side way. Why? Because the giants that are in us are asleep. They are dead, but they are asleep. That's why as a church we are being trodden under feet by men. Why? Because the gift is lying dormant in us. I, 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 I know you, I know you who are. You can do better than that. I know you men of God, you can preach better than that. But the challenge is that the gift that is in you is I know you worship team. You can sing better than this. But your problem is that you come to the services with your gifts. Fire, yeah. believe us. It's the time for us to activate some things. It's the time for you to stir up this gift that is inside you. And then you activate the dimension of the king's highway. Amen. The last thing is by faith. Now the Bible says with God nothing is impossible. And then it also says who believes everything is possible. So, okay, let's understand this. So, if everything or if nothing is impossible with God, 
And if anyone who believes everything is possible to him, then what does my faith do? So my faith elevates me and puts to God's gas. So if that, that whatever God is able to do, if I can raise my faith, I can do the things which God is able to do. Now Jesus says, if your faith is as small as a mustard seed, you are able to say to this mountain, and it will be removed. The side way makes you go around the mountain. Water follows a path of least resistance. It flows down here and it collects at the lowest part of any given area. And so do we as believers when we avoid challenges. Like an airplane. I mean, an airplane when it is flying up there, 
and you are trying to shoot it with your pistol, no matter how much you might shoot it, but it is flying outside your range. In line that no matter the devil can bring his songs to us as a fellowship, but we are flying outside his range. We are on the king's highway. Thank you. 